Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Energy News Beat Daily Stand Up. Today is actually April 1st. So, welcome to April Fool's Day. Yes, this is the Daily Energy Stand Up with Stu Turley. Michael's out on assignment for Easter. So, hope you have a fantastic Easter weekend. Let's get ready to rumble. We got us some stories that are unbelievable. Mounting losses mean Sweden's wind industry faces total financial cl- uh, collapse. DeSantis office quietly backed Florida banned on wind energy. It's kind of interesting coming around the corner here. We have solar panel waste reach crisis levels in the next two to three years. Australian experts warn. I want to give you a little inside baseball. It's already here. Let's go to the next one here. It's time to abandon, is it a time to abandon the idea of phasing out oil and gas? I'm not sure, but let's have a talk about it. Let's sit back and take a look at this one. Tax expert warns ripple effects of Baltimore Bridge collapse. Economic damage is hard to comprehend. Uh, I didn't realize how bad it was, but this is pretty important. And then a high guesser, high pressure gas pipeline halts salvage of MV Dolly, which is uh, the Baltimore Bridge uh, collapse. This is a uh, big, big deal going on right there. And again, our hearts and prayers go out to all the folks that are impacted there. So let's start out with our first story here. Mounting losses mean Sweden's wind industry faces total financial collapse. I'll tell you, uh, this one is pretty um, amazing when you sit back and take a look. The total loss for the years 2017 through 2022 amounted to 13.5 billion just in losses in uh, the Swedish uh, uh, cor- uh, Korna, uh, which is 1.2 billion in. Um, uh, U.S. 13.5 uh, billion Swedish Corna, uh, 1.2 billion in euros, which is a net loss margin of 39%. You can't operate a business for that long uh, by any stretch of the imagination for being uh, 39% of negative money. Since the Economist's uh, initial findings, uh, Sweden's largest wind, wind farm installation of 179 uh, turbines is now facing bankruptcy uh, if, with millions of krona in debt. Uh, unbelievable. The losses are simply because the industry cannot produce electricity at a cost below market price, despite extensive subsidies. This would put any other industry out of business. If this was not mandated by uh, government and the force to, quote unquote, renewable energy, no, this is not market friendly at all. And when you take a look at the fact that these wind turbines are not recyclable, this is really devastating for the economy and the environment. Um let me know what you think. Let us know. Uh, share uh, in the comment sections. Let us know. Reach out to us if uh, you see this this trend happening around the world as we are. Let's go to the next uh, story here. DeSantis qu- office quietly backed Florida ban on wind energy. Um, I am not totally uh, behind uh, Governor DeSantis as a run for uh, uh, president, but he has been an outstanding governor, and I I really applaud them for this one. A version of the bill that is now awaiting DeSantis' signature to become law will ban offshore wind turbines in state waters also proposes to delay the majority of references to climate change found in the state law. It's pretty amazing. Um, When you sit back and take a look, as discussed with Representative Altman and Senator 
uh, Collins, this uh, referred the alternative to the bills as banning wind energy, wrote Farrell in one email address to the lawmakers. Uh, the constitution, the construction, operation, or expansion of a wind energy facility, or an offshore wind energy facility in in this state, they don't. Uh, Florida currently does not utilize offshore wind because they just don't have nearly as much wind as is deemed uh, good. I applaud this because wind energy is technologically not sustainable and is fiscally irresponsible, but is also damaging to the wildlife. If the technology changes, I'm all in. So hats off to Governor DeSantis for uh, following through on this, and um, we'll see how it plays out. The next story here, solar panel waste to reach crisis levels in the next two to three years, and Australian experts warn. A uh, 12-year industry roadmap has been unveiled to address the rising amount of solar panel waste headed up for the trip. Uh, the solar panel is quickly approaching its tipping point. Uh, I'll tell you what, it already has. The amount of waste that they are, uh, solar panels are not recyclable. They are filled with hazardous materials and they are being improperly disposed and just put in land waste or put on ships and shipped to other countries. So the energy hypocrisy of the United States needs to not buy solar panels from child uh, abused uh, systems or wait until we can actually use solar panels that can be recycled. This is critical. How about the um, 3,300 acres of Texas wind farm solar panels that just got destroyed in a um, uh, a hailstorm. Those are now full headed to a landfill, and all of those three thousand three eight hundred acres are not even usable until reclamation can happen. Uh, here is a quote. If we get this right, we can close this loop in a way that will underpin the Australian life for generations with the recovery and recycling of these precious metals and rare earth inside discarded end of life panels. I applaud this. Let's take a look at it. The federal government announced Friday in a $1 billion funding boost aimed at increasing the number of Australian made solar panels which may increase the number of solar panels designed in a manner that makes recycling easier. Currently, 90% of the Australia panels used in Australia are imported from China. Okay, you take a look at the $1 billion fund that they are going to be using. It is not going to be uh, technologically, this is again, not solving the problem. Building solar panels that from materials that can be recycled is critical. And then being able to sustain power at market rates is unbelievably critical. So keep an eye on this, but again, the only thing that we've seen from the renewable industry is the wealth distribution and transfer of wealth. This has not been anything other than uh, taxing and then taxing from the taxpayers and going to the rich. And that's all this has been. And this may be something similar. I am all in on solar if it can be recycled. And uh, hopefully we're going to follow this to see if it does happen. Let's go to the next one here. Is it time to abandon the idea of phasing out oil and gas? This article has several different key points in here. And that is uh, the 
uh, green side of the equation is really upset that Saudi Arabia, uh, as, uh, Saudi Aramco's CEO, Amir and Nasir, came out and said that the energy transition is not happening and called for policies to make the uh, abandon the fantasy of phasing out oil and uh, coal and uh, oil and gas. Uh, here's where Saudi Arabia, and you've heard me say this before, Saudi Arabia has done this right. They are using the profits from oil and gas and then paying for research and implementation into clean energy. They're uh, putting in clean energy technology into hydrogen. They're working on the technology, and so they're actually trying to go to um, renewable or uh, sustainable energy, but they're using the profits from oil and gas in order to do that. I think that makes sense. Where this article also brings up is that there are green campaigns that are criticizing big oil for undermining the importance of the green transition and global efforts to tackle climate change. However, they're more mad that the people at the UAE and other big uh, oil countries have stepped to the forefront of COP28 and in the front saying that we are not going to migrate away from uh, oil and gas uh, as fast as they would like. I, I agree with them. Let's fund the energy transition through the use of proper use um, and going through and taking a look at how to best deploy the money and then actually put in technology that works for an energy trans transition until then you're not going to have an energy transition it's a pretty interesting article so let's come over to this article from Fox News. Tax experts warn, expert warns ripple effects from Baltimore bridge collapse. Economic damage hard to comprehend. Uh, this was a pretty amazing. Nico uh, uh, Spinandros, uh, CEO of Auto Agent. They have, I believe, a billion dollars or more in tax uh, that they have... Um, tax sub uh people submitting taxes and that they follow through they are very well versed on the tax implications of this disaster and uh this was pretty good article going on in here the auto agent ceo described how bad it is that one of the u.s largest seaports came to a screeching heart it's hard to comprehend how this will amp uh, impact things not for the city but for the state and east of the united states but possibly the rest of the country this was the one of the biggest uh, import facilities for cars but also export for coal india has already uh, is the biggest impact of the exports to coal on this so Property taxes, they fund all the local agencies, municipalities, city services, essential services, police departments, school districts, and noting how in the state of Maryland taxes are collected on twice a year. This is going to be dramatic. Um, a professor of economics and department chair uh, uh, said the impact of Baltimore economy is likely to be substantial. I think he could have used a bigger word like holy cow, Batman, but I'm not really sure. And then the other story on this on energynewsbeat.com um, is high pressure price uh, pipeline halts salvage of the MV Dolly, which is the cargo ship that hit the uh, bridge in Baltimore. Uh, the salvage master we interviewed said sections of the bids had cut through the deck, causing serious structural weakness. Imagining a steel bar put in a metal, a powerful metal vice. He says, now lift and drop that other end. The tide, you're lifting and dropping on that bar. Each time you do, the vice gets deeper and deeper into the steel. 
Um, and then there is a pipe uh, underneath it. Uh, Miss producer, uh, if you can bring that, uh, you can, uh, there is high pressure gas line. You could bring that up and show our uh, viewers. It shows Fort Carroll uh, is right there where the bridge was impacted is the actual natural gas pipeline. So um, they have depressurized it right now. So it is not in any danger, but they want to make sure that they don't damage it in order to try to um uh, get the ship off of it as well as start the recommend uh, and get the uh, salvaging and the channels open. So with that, like, subscribe, share, uh, and uh, we truly appreciate all of our grateful listeners and uh, have an absolutely wonderful uh, April Fool's Day. Hope you have some kind of fun uh, prank in store for you. Have a great one. Thank you.